¡Vamos! ¡Vamos! ¡Qué lindo! ¡Qué Hello, people. As you can probably tell, we'll be talking about the winged fire breathing dragon named Vermax today, the temperamental companion of Prince Jaceres Valerian. Vermax made an impactful appearance in the first season of HBO's House of the Dragon, but had a total screen time of around two and a half minutes. Yeah, we understand the limitations of CGI, but that's too little screen presence for any dragon. But let's not forget that Vermax is one of the youngest dragons, and in season one, there wasn't much for Vermax to do other than fly around around for message deliveries. So, in this video, we'll analyze how Vermax has grown in size over the years and what makes this dragon so special. We're ready to dive right in, but before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Who is Vermax? First, here's a proper introduction to this feisty dragon. Vermax bonded with Prince Jaceres Valerian, the oldest son of Rhaenyra Targaryen and her husband, Laenor Valerian. In the TV series, it was made apparent that Laenor Valerian was interested in men of his age and barely consummated his marriage to Rhaenyra. Thus, when Rhaenyra gave birth to three sons, Jaceres, Lucerys, and Joffrey, there were rumors that she conceived her babies from her affair with Sir Harwin Strong, the sworn shield of the princess. The rumors were especially circulated by Queen Alicent Hightower and her followers, who constantly mocked and questioned the true lineage of Rhaenyra's sons. We know that dragons play an important role in the Targaryen way of life, which brings us to the custom of placing dragon eggs in the cradle of a newborn Targaryen baby. If the eggs hatched, then the newborn was proven to be a true Targaryen, but if the eggs hardened or became lifeless, they were considered to be a bad omen. Here's an excerpt from the book Blood and Fire that chronicles the Targaryen history, and we quote, by royal decree, each of the Valerian boys was presented with a dragon's egg whilst in the cradle. Those who doubted the paternity of Rhaenyra's sons whispered that the eggs would never hatch. But the birth, in turn, of three young dragons gave the lie to their words. Subsequently, the dragon babies were named Vermax, Arax, and Tyraxes. While Vermax hatched to the oldest prince, Jaceres Valerian's cradle, Arax bonded with the middle son Lucerys and Tyraxes, who became the youngest prince Joffrey's companion. Thus, Vermax is among the youngest dragons in all of Westeros, born at the same time as Jaceres Valerian, who was around 14 years old when the Dance of the Dragons Civil War began. Just a refresher here, the Civil War was fought between Rhaenyra's army of the Blacks and Alicent Hightower and her son Aegon II's team of the Greens. By the time of the war, Vermax had grown big enough to be mounted. The book mentions that the three dragon hatchlings were thriving under Targaryen care and noticeably amplifying in size each year. So, when Rhaenyra held her first black council as the queen in Dragonstone, Jaceres offered to help in the war. And, instead of fighting on his dragon, he was asked to fly out and gain the support of more houses for Team Rhaenyra. Jaceres first flew Vermax to the Eyrie and secured the support of Lady Jane Arryn of the Vale of Arryn. He then steered Vermax to Sisterton to gain the support of the three sisters. Vermax also flew to the White Harbor, who pledged their support for Rhaenyra, and lastly, to the far north in Winterfell, where Jaceres met with Cregan Stark, the Lord of Winterfell. Thus, even without any war experience, Vermax played a critical role in strengthening Rhaenyra's army of the Blacks during the war. Many battles were fought during the Dance of the Dragon era, and one such was the Battle of the Gullet, which saw Jaceres going to battle with Vermax, but not returning. Jaceres and other dragon riders attacked the fleet of warships sent by the Triarchy, allies of the Greens. Vermax had almost decimated the army by blasting them with dragon flame, till Vermax's elevation dropped and the dragon came crashing down into a burning galley, which marked the end of this adolescent fire breather. Jaceres managed to dismount himself from Vermax and clung on to the burning wreckage of his ship, but he was struck by crossbows and sank into the sea. <laughs> How big is Vermax? Author George R. R. Martin doesn't offer exact measurements of the dragons in his books, but you can get an idea about their size by comparison. Vermax was one of the younger dragons in its teenage years during its first appearance on the show in episode 6. At that time, Vermax was slightly taller than the teenage Jaceres when walking on all fours. 
Lengthwise, Vermax must have been 10 to 12 feet long, with a wingspan supposedly double that. And as per the book Fire and Blood, Vermax, Arax, and Tyraxes were thriving and growing larger every year. Thus, Vermax's growth kind of mirrors Jaceris' desire to prove himself during the Dance of the Dragons and to actively contribute to his mother's side in the war. Vermax appears again in the 10th episode, and this time, the dragon has grown five to six times larger in size, measuring somewhere between 60 to 70 feet in length. Vermax is ready to be mounted at this point and flies out of Dragonstone on various missions with Jaceris. As of the first episode of House of the Dragon, Vermax is only larger than Lucerus' dragon Arax and smaller than the likes of Sunfire, Sea Smoke, Cyrax, and Dreamfire, all of whom can be categorized as medium-sized dragons. And hence, Vermax pales in comparison to the size of humongous dragons like Caraxes, Vermithor, Melis, and Vagar. Vagar, measuring around 240 to 250 feet in length, is the oldest and largest living dragon in all of Westeros. This means Vermax is around three and a half times smaller than Vagar in overall size, and just like Vagar could tear apart Arax, she could have taken down Vermax with equal ease. When Vermax dies in the Battle of the Gullet, the dragon was still growing in size and hadn't reached its full potential. As the legend says, dragons never stop growing, which means Vermax very much had the potential to further amplify in size and match the might of Vagarsum. We have to mention another interesting point here, that Vermax was born in a dungeon, and dragons born in captivity don't grow as large as ones that had free roam. Let's take Daenerys' dragon Drogon, for example. Drogon was born around 200 years after the events of House of the Dragon, but because Drogon was set free, it grew at a faster pace. Drogon measured exponentially larger than Vermax, even when they were around the same age. The Jodmas are gone. What color is Vermax? The dragons in George R. R. Martin's fantasy world come with enigmatic hues and tones. For example, Vagar, the largest dragon seen on the show, is bronze colored with greenish blue tints. The largest dragon in all of the Seven Kingdoms was Balerion, who not only had black scales and wings, but also a dark fire breath. While Vermax's color is not explicitly mentioned in the book, the show has depicted this dragon with dark green scales and wing membranes in pale orange. Vermax's eyes are a greenish bronze that would send a chill down your spine with a single stare. Vermax has horns jutting out from either side of its head, which also line up with the area above its eyes. Vermax has a row of spikes protruding along its back, which flutter menacingly when Vermax feels threatened or alarmed, and the membranes connecting the spikes have the same orange glow as Vermax's wings. If you were to dig deeper, the color of the dragons symbolize something more than we realize. For example, there seems to be a parallel between the dragons of Rhaenyra's eldest three sons and the OG dragons of the conquerors Aegon, Rhaenys, and Visenya, and also the dragons of Daenerys Targaryen. With a color scheme of bronze and green, Vermax is similar to Vagar, Visenya's mount, and Rhaegal, one of Danny's dragons. Rhaegal, in particular, had jade green scales with eyes that emitted a bronze glow, just like Vermax's. This is interesting because Jon Snow rode the dragon Rhaegal in Game of Thrones, and Jaceris has several subtle resemblances to the character. Let us explain. Rhaegal was named after Daenerys Targaryen's eldest brother Rhaegar, who was later revealed to be Jon Snow's biological father. The secret romance of Rhaegar and Lyanna Stark and their confidential marriage kind of mirrors the love story of Jaceris and Sarah Snow and their undisclosed wedding. This tiny but crucial detail likens Jaceris Valerion to Rhaegar, and hence it makes sense that Jaceris would ride a dragon that is similar to one named after Rhaegar. In addition to all this, just in case you missed it, Jaceris gives major Jon Snow vibes when he visits Winterfell early on in House of the Dragon Season 2. How does Vermax interact with Jaceris? According to some Westerosi maesters, dragons are more intelligent than humans with an unnatural level of understanding of the universe. Once they bond with a human, dragons magically sense their needs and attain an impressive level of awareness about their rider's thoughts and desires. Dragons can identify the enemies of their riders and mirror the emotions of their owners. When we meet Vermax for the first time, the dragon is young, in fact, as young as Prince Jaceris himself. Jaceris meets Vermax in the Dragon Pit under the supervision of experienced dragon keepers. 
Instructed by the Keepers, Jaceris attempts to establish a bond with Vermax, but the dragon seems to struggle with obeying commands of the young prince at first. Jaceris was accompanied to the dragon pit by Aegon Targaryen, among others, and the dragon keeper told Jaceris that he must hold mastery over his dragon, just as Prince Aegon has with Sunfire. In the dragon pit, Jaceris tries to train Vermax with verbal commands, but when the dragon refuses to oblige, the dragon keepers step in and instruct Jaceris to be more firm with his commands. When Jaceris delivers his first command, Vermax looks directly at him with a sense of wonder, standing almost face to face with the young prince while letting out soft growls and grunts. However, as a young dragon, Vermax is soon distracted by the sheep and proceeds towards the prey, defying Jaceris' commands to halt. Jaceris is told by the dragon keepers that once Vermax is fully bonded with him, the dragon will refuse to accept instructions from anyone else. The only command of Jaceris that Vermax seemed to follow was Dracaris, the High Valerian word for dragonfire. While a young Jaceris was excited to command his first Dracaris, Vermax was equally excited about carrying it out. Vermax let out its fire breath at the sheep and the dragon pit was filled with the shrill cries of the prey burning alive. Impressed with the hunt, Vermax then devoured the charred up prey as Jaceris watched on in wonder. Is Vermax male or female? According to Septon Barth, who served as the Hand of the King for Jaehaerys Targaryen I, dragons are gender fluid. They can alter their genders, thus making them both male and female. And this is coming from someone who authorized the book Dragons, Worms, and Wyverns, their unnatural history. This view, however, is strongly opposed by Archmaester Gildane, who is known for his extensive studies on Targaryen history. Gildane believed that determining a dragon's sex was extremely difficult, but was of the opinion that if a dragon laid eggs, then it was a female, and if it did not, then it was a male. Vermax was believed to be a male dragon, an idea that was challenged when it was rumored that Vermax laid a clutch of eggs during its visit to Winterfell. Cold weather and snow are a deadly combination for Vermax, as these things make the dragon really irritable. So, Prince Jaceris' visit to the north had to be shortened, as Vermax was in a hurry to fly out to warmer parts. A testimony by the Lackwit Dwarf Mushroom claims that during its brief stay in Winterfell, Vermax laid eggs within the castle's crypts. While this seems to prove Barth's theory correct, that dragons can change sex, Archmaester Gildane dismissed this account as mere rumor. According to him, there was no other source to corroborate that Vermax ever produced eggs. Barth's theory is in fact explored in Game of Thrones. Daenerys' dragons, Rhaegal, Viserion, and Drogon are referred to as male in the dialogues, until Master Aemon asks Samuel Tarly to read from Barth's book. In his dying moments, Aemon has a crucial realization, and we quote, Dragons are neither male nor female. Barth saw the truth of that, but now one, and now the other, as changeable as flame. The language misled us all for a thousand years. This means Daenerys' dragons could have been both female and male during different times in the story, and because Vermax can very well be a descendant of Rhaegal, the same applies to that dragon as well. Call Vermax to heal, Princess Aerys. The Hyrens. Can Vermax reproduce? We know the dragons lay clutches of eggs from time to time, but the debate over how the eggs are conceived is never ending. Let's explore a couple of theories. One might say the dragons can reproduce asexually through a process known as parthogenesis. That is, the embryo develops directly inside the dragon without any need for fertilization, and then the eggs are hatched. In this case, the hatched dragons should be more similar in appearance, like a homogenous looking bunch instead of being a mix of traits. And the dragons in Westeros all look different from each other. Also, we just discussed that dragons change sex, presumably depending on the needs of the population. But a species laying eggs asexually will not need to change sex for reproduction. So, for dragons in general, reproducing asexually is a far-fetched theory which obviously also extends to Vermax. Our next point is that in the book Blood and Fire, the Grand Maester is deliberating over the asexual reproduction theory and then dismissing it in favor of the dragon mating dances and bonding for life. If we're to build on that, then the male dragons partake in some sort of mating process, aka the dance, and impregnate the females who then lay fertilized eggs. In the book, it's revealed that Vermithor and Silverwing love to coil together and were mated dragons. Thus, dragons do reproduce through some sort of mating procedure unique to their species, and going by that logic, Vermax too can reproduce when the dragon bonds with a mate. Cyrax, the Mount of Rhaenyra, is believed to be the mother of the youngest generation of dragons, Vermax, Arax, and Tyraxes. 
Some eagle-eyed fans have pointed out that during Episode 4 and some of Episode 5 of House of the Dragon Season 1, Rhaenyra's dragon Cyrax and Daemon's dragon Caraxes were in the dragon pit together for quite a while. Fans are of the belief that Rhaenyra and Daemon's relationship may have influenced the dragons to mate, as dragons can often sense the emotions of their riders and react accordingly. Moreover, the encyclopedic Rise of the Dragon book describes Caraxes and Cyrax as mated dragons, suggesting Caraxes is the progenitor of Vermax. It is known that dragon eggs are not hatched immediately and life can thrive within them for years and even decades. Thus, it's no surprise that Vermax's egg hatched years later, when Gisera's Valerian was born, sometime in the 10-year gap between episodes 5 and 6. <laughs> What color is Vermax's fire? Do young dragons have a different fire color than adults? We see Vermax blasting out fire during the dragon's very first appearance on the show. Vermax breathed out a strong stream of yellow and red flame that burnt up the sheep in mere seconds. Before barbecuing the prey, Vermax let out a raspy shriek and, in a blink or you'll miss it moment, one could also spot blue flames inside Vermax's mouth. Vermax's fire breath lasted for only about five to six seconds and there could have been two possible reasons for it. First, it's a fairly young dragon. Vermax could only sustain the fire breath for a few seconds. If this theory checks out, it would mean that young dragons in general can maintain their fire breath for a shorter span compared to their adult counterparts. Moreover, it is known that the older the dragons get, the more intense their flames are. The flames might not change color with age, but the higher intensity surely makes the fire breath look more vibrant and deathly. Another possible reason behind Vermax's short-lived fire breath could be that it was so powerful that Vermax needed just a few seconds to char up the goat. Maybe Vermax could have blasted the flame longer, but there was simply no need for it. Add to that the fact that Vermax was also in a hurry to feed on the prey. Is Vermax immortal? The Blacks lost quite a few dragons during the Targaryen Civil War and Vermax was one of them. While dragons are formidable beasts that can live for centuries, they're not indestructible. So, immortality is not a trait that the dragons of Westeros have. The book tells us that Balerion, the Black Dread, clocked 200 years and eventually died of old age. Meraxes was killed after the Dornish army shattered its skull with a scorpion bolt, Melis died battling Vagar in Sunfire, and Stormcloud died of the wounds from crossbow and bolts fired by Triarchy soldiers. A wounded Stormcloud helplessly flying back to Dragonstone marked the beginning of the Battle of the Gullet that saw the end of Vermax and its rider Jaceris. The prince flew into the battle on his dragon along with a bunch of other dragon riders, burning up the Triarchy's fleet with dragon fire. But the fleet had experience fighting dragons and targeted all of their attacks towards Vermax, shooting the dragon with scorpion bolts and arrows. Just when it seemed that Vermax had managed to obliterate the Triarchy warships, the dragons somehow lost elevation and flew too close to the waters, crashed into a burning galley. It's theorized that Vermax was possibly struck by a scorpion bolt in the eye or pulled down by a grapnel. Some survivor accounts state that Vermax struggled to free itself from the rigging but eventually sank with the burning galley. While Jaceris managed to leap free, he was killed by Myrish crossbow. Does Vermax have any weaknesses? Vermax's death gives us a solid idea about the dragon's weaknesses. It can be seriously injured by scorpion bolts and repeated arrow fire from the ground. Even adult dragons can be wounded by these attacks, and Vermax was just a young dragon with hardly any battle experience. Some old wives' tales claim that the underbelly and the throat are the weak spots of a dragon, but in reality, dragons are the most vulnerable when attacked in the eyes. To kill a dragon, its eyes have to be pierced long enough that the brain is ruptured and the skull is shattered, and the Triarchy fleet seems aware of this knowledge. It was possible that Vermax was struck in the underbelly with a grapnel, which lowered its elevation, but piercing its eyes with scorpion bolts would have been a fatal blow to the dragon, one that perhaps caused it to lose its vision and crash into the fleet below. Dragons in general can only be burnt by the fire breath of other dragons, and their skin and flesh can only be ripped apart by others of their kind. Marvelous Verdict Even though Vermax isn't known for any distinctive physical qualities, Jaceris' dragon proved to be a major asset during the Dance of the Dragons era, particularly in the Battle of the Gullet that brought about its end. Both Vermax and Jaceris died fighting, and their deaths were a massive blow to the Blacks. 
Rhaenyra Targaryen lost her eldest son Jaceres, her youngest son Viserys was captured, and the Valerian fleet lost a third of its warships in the Battle of the Gullet. While the Blacks had a strategic win over the Greens, the aftermath was so harrowing that Lord Corliss Valerian said, and we quote, If this be victory, I pray I never win another. So folks, I'm afraid that's all we got for you today, but please let us know what you think of this young dragon that's irritated by snow but flies into battle like a formidable force. Is Vermax your favorite dragon from Westeros? If not, then who? Also, if you liked our video, please stay tuned for more House of the Dragon content right here on Marvelous Videos. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. That just means more House of the Dragon content in the future. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.